In the final analysis, when someone asks, why are you a priest or why are you an oblate? Um, it was the most radical way to say thanks to God. I was raised in a, you know, a, a strong Catholic family and um, I didn't go to any Catholic schools. Uh, there really weren't Catholic schools in the town I grew up in, uh, Adrian, Michigan. Um, the oblates had been weekend help um, at my parish in Adrian long before I was born into the early, I think, 1940s, they were at weekend help. But when I was about seven, they actually took over the uh, leadership of the parish. So I was raised with oblates um, growing up. And I went to college and just kind of stopped going to church. Nothing personal, no deep doctrinal issues. I just missed the first weekend, missed the second. Pretty soon, couldn't remember the last time I'd been. But as I returned to church, um, something that people would say to me even in high school, which was, you know, I think you might have a vocation, those comments returned. And um, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I've heard this before. And it was a diocesan priest from Nova Scotia uh, who happened to be at, at my university uh, that was just like, he, he would say that to me and I'd say, yeah, I'll go if God calls. And one day he just said, well, what are you doing to listen? You know, when someone would say discern a vocation, I wasn't sure what that meant. So it was great to have a mentor to kind of lead me through looking at those questions. And what it came down to was looking at my skills, my gifts and talents that God had blessed me with and seeing if I couldn't use those, you know, fully for God. I think the commonality between what I did before I was an oblate and what I do as an oblate is advocacy. I think it's really critical for a lot of reasons, particularly in a time frame where like standardized testing is so big and some of these sort of cookie cutter approaches to education and juxtapose that with, with a Salesian education that's rooted in be who you are and be that well. There's certainly elements of education that are the same no matter who you are. Um, but there are also elements that uh, have to be drawn out of the individual, and that shows up in every discipline. Ultimately, um, we are unique, and so that we want people um, uh, to celebrate that. I think sometimes we tolerate each other, and, and my goal is to say we would celebrate each other, not just tolerate each other, uh, but to say that your, what's different about you is uh, something to be celebrated. You know, sometimes the oddities or the differences, the quirkinesses, um, and that's true in the classroom, that's true in the hallway, that's true in the lunchroom, that's true in the chapel. I think Salesian spirituality in, in my ministry uh, as a president or any ministry I've done is that St. Francis de Sales uh, was very balanced as we speak of gentleness and humility, you know, and, and the connection between gentleness and strength. That great quote of, you know, nothing is so uh, strong as gentleness and nothing so gentle as real strength. Um, for a lot of people, those have nothing to do with each other, and yet that paradox of their relationship um, I think is one of the things that shapes my ministry, that I want people to, um, to be balanced in who they are because um, that's inherent to being an oblate, that's inherent to Salesian spirituality. My name is Father Jeff Rose, I'm an oblate of St. Francis de Sales, and this is how I live Jesus.